Welcome again. Um, I'm Erica Joseph, President of the Community Foundation, but it's my pleasure this morning to introduce our Vice Chair, um, uh, Velda Henry. She is uh, presenting on behalf of Jim Jones this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, Jim is home recovering from some surgery, doing very well, but not cleared to drive quite yet. So uh, keep him in your thoughts. And Ms. H Mrs. Henry? Good afternoon. I hope everyone enjoyed their lunch. A big thank you goes out to the Civic Center uh, for their amazing meal and service. Now let's officially kick off the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore 2023 annual meeting. My name is Velda Henry and I'm the Vice Chair of the Community Foundation. Thank you to Duke Marshall, Duke Marshall and Dr. Zant for welcoming us to, here today. At this time, I would like to recognize my colleagues on the foundation board. We are responsible for furthering the mission of your community foundation. These individuals represent a wide range of industries, skill sets, demographics, and backgrounds. And yet, we share a common passion and strong desire to serve our community, helping to improve the quality of life on the Lower Eastern Shore. Would you please stand to be recognized? Thank you. I would be remiss if I did not take the time to acknowledge someone we wish were here with us today, and it, that is Todd Hershey. Todd left us too soon and in, in addition to his strong contributions as a leader on our board and committees, it is his friendship that creates the greatest void. Todd's presence is greatly missed within the Community Foundation by his family and all who knew him. We are honored to hold the Todd Hershey Memorial Fund created by his parents and supported by so many in this room and beyond. Okay, before lunch, you saw two of them on stage, and you'll see another one in a few minutes. But I wanted to want to give a special thanks to our three board members who have completed four three-year terms and are rotating off the board this year. Their commitment to the Community Foundation has been unwavering, and we are a stronger organization because of their efforts. Duke Marshall, Stephanie Willey, and Dr. Julia Sant. You have our sincerest appreciation for the dedication you've given to this organization. We have a gift for you, so would you please come forward? We wish you well. Again, thank you for your service. While we never like to see our friends go, it is exciting to welcome new members to our board. We have benefited from 40 years of outstanding leadership, and we know that this group of individuals will continue that legacy. It is my pleasure to welcome Gail Foltz, Sharon Grant, Michael Mathers, and Phyllis Mitchell to the Community Foundation Board. If you would please stand. I look forward to working with each of you and appreciate your willingness to share your time and talents with us and your community. In addition, the following board members have been re-elected for three-year terms. Alan Brown, 
Jenny Malone, Jan Perdue, Andy Kim, and Greg Taws. Thank you to each for their continued support. Thank you. Also, to our board members, I want to extend a huge thank you to everyone that serves on our volunteer committees. These individuals contribute hundreds of volunteer hours to the foundation every year, performing vital activities such as reviewing grant applications and making site visits to ensure the integrity of our grant making progress process. They also provide guidance in the stewardship of the foundation's financial assets, assist in event planning, development activities, recognition efforts, and more. We literally would not be who we are without the help of our volunteers. Now, usually the award is given by the chair, but our chairman, Jim Jones, is recovering from surgery. He is doing well, but has not been cleared quite yet. I spoke with him yesterday, and he says his regrets. Uh, he called and, to give me a pep talk, and he says, he asked me, are you nervous? I said, yes. <laughs> he says, well, just look at the audience and think of everybody in their pajamas. So I could tell him everybody looks great in the pajamas. He really wished he could be with you today, but he must obey his doctor's orders. So I have the honor of presenting the award this year. The Chairman's Award is presented annu annually to one individual for outstanding service to the Community Foundation. Though many of our volunteers embody excellence and service, this individual deserves special recognition. While our year was one of many successes and reasons for celebration, our organization was dealing with the realities of loss as we grieved one of our own and wanted to continue in his spirit. After the loss of Todd, we had many spaces to fill and a lot we wanted to accomplish in his honor. In the days and weeks following that loss, we had to bring his goals and ours to fruition. So many of our own leaders stepped up and we thanked them all. But one colleague was always helping to navigate the void. He always said yes to any question asked of him. I expect it's because he has been in the chairman's shoes before. It is my honor to present the 2023 Community Foundation of the Eastern Shores Chairman Award to my friend Mike Truitt for his exceptional service to our organization this year. Mike. You know how to put a guy on the spot. Um, <laughs> I did not see this coming at all, at all. Um, thank you, uh, thank to all of you, and uh, I should be thanking all of you uh, because you make philanthropy fun, you make it easy, and it has been wonderful to serve on the board, and I'd like to say thanks to Jim Allman uh, for calling me and inviting me the call to service. It's been wonderful, and to the, to the new board members, you're gonna love it. To all of you that uh, support the organization, thank you. And I'm just very surprised and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mike, and congratulations again. Now before I turn over the microphone, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the team who leads the daily efforts at the foundation. We are so fortunate that these professionals who are committed, dedicated, and work di diligently each day to further the mission of the foundation. Indeed, their contributions are invaluable, all under the leadership of President Erica Joseph. It is obvious that they enjoy what they do, and that's helping others. Erica will now take this opportunity to share some highlights from the year.
I'm going to keep flipping. These aren't my notes. Uh, thank you again um, for joining us this afternoon for the Community Foundation's annual meeting um, and to our outstanding cadre of local leaders that um, help us navigate uh, the world and implement the mission of the Community Foundation. Uh, I would like to echo the appreciation appreciation for our staff. We do have a wonderful mix of talent and passion and experience, and I get the pleasure to work alongside them. I have to give a special thanks to Shelby Thompson, who puts this event together. It is an all-hands-on-deck uh, event, but she makes sure that all of the hands know what to do. Uh, thank you, Shelby. So I know that you don't want this meeting to be long enough for me to share all the highlights of the year. So we will try to just hit a few of the high points. Um, there is no year without challenges, but we are very proud that your philanthropic visions are put into action here at the Community Foundation. And we are very much looking forward to 2024 and the 40th anniversary of your Community Foundation. This year's absolutely gorgeous annual report shares the stats of our work together. Thank you, Victoria, for putting together that publication. Um, and it highlights the tremendous generosity of this region. Folks in this room, you are those numbers. You are the impact of the Community Foundation, and we are just truly grateful to be your trusted partner in philanthropy. There's no single data point from the year or a total of any one thing that is gonna make that particular year matter. But it's the investment continuing from a diverse network of people, organizations, businesses, and other community partners to make the action to create communities that we wanna live in and where we can all find our ways to thrive. At last year's meeting, we debuted a newly created Lower Shore Scholarship Fund. This endowment, it's one of the few selected for the Endow Maryland tax credit, plug, plug. Uh, and it provides annual grants to our higher education partners, Salisbury University, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, and Warwick Community College. Uh, this year, a special welcome to our newest friend in higher ed, uh, Dr. Deb Casey. Uh, Deb, would you wave or stand? Where are you? There she is. I want to thank Deb for her early and eager collaboration and for the commitment to continuing and enhancing the legacy of Warwick. Deb, we very much look forward to the future. We are thrilled at the support that this fund has received, and we're proud that it's made its first round of grants to support local students. Um, this fund is designed to put the power in our institutions to help us find the students that might fall through the cracks, that need a hand up. There are some highlighted, um, and we just are very much appreciative for that partnership in putting that scholarship fund to work. This has been one of our most engaged and most engaging years ever. After that time that was outside of our control, we see local nonprofits have reinvigorated their fundraising, their volunteer activities, and their networking. And we also have done the same. We kicked off 2023 with a celebration of our own. We renamed the meeting room at the Community Foundation. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but that meeting room and other space at the Community Foundation is one of the many resources that we provide free of charge to our local nonprofit partners. Mrs. Eleanor Mulligan created an endowment to support the work of the foundation and its efforts specifically in strengthening local nonprofits. Since moving to the area in 1994, she and her late husband Joe saw the growth of our organization. But more importantly, in her words, she saw the goodness of all of those involved who clearly felt the joy of giving and that this organization continues to serve genuinely and in the most important word in its name, community. So in honor of her generosity, that space is now the Joseph and Eleanor Mulligan meeting room. She couldn't be here today, I think she's at a DAR meeting, but thank you, Eleanor. We also hosted a sold out Lower Shore Nonprofit Summit. This was in partnership with our friends at the United Way and at Pace at Salisbury University. This summit brought together 125 local nonprofit leaders, and it was kicked off by an inspiring keynote address from Maryland Governor Wes Moore. 
These events are important because it gives us an opportunity to share, build, grow, network. And so you can look forward to the 2024 summit that will be held on April 25th and 26th, same place. I also want to recognize a strong year for two giving circles that are held at the Community Foundation. Giving circles provide a sort of team approach to philanthropy. They allow like-minded people to collaborate for a specific interest or cause. Our newest giving circle, the Black Excellence Community Fund, was launched in 2022, and they hosted two key events this year. In March, they made their first grants supporting Black-led organizations working in the community on a variety of issues around education, health, and well-being. In August, right here at the, community, at the Civic Center, they celebrated Black Philanthropy Month with a fundraising event. Our board members, Sonia Whited, Sharon Morris, and Lori Carter lead this giving circle, and they're taking great pride in expanding opportunities for individuals to get involved in philanthropy. Ladies, we appreciate the work that you've done in this, in this area and look forward to the growth that's to come. The Women's Fund also celebrated a milestone this year. They had their largest grant cycle to date. This was thanks to a challenge grant from Dr. Carolyn Elmore, and they were able to grant $65,000 to 16 local organizations. Those programs will help fulfill unmet needs of women and girls in our community. They have had an incredibly um, strong year and continue to see membership in that organization grow. We are incredibly fortunate at the Community Foundation to see your generosity firsthand, and we look forward to those collective efforts and others. At the Community Foundation, we're all about a giving heart, and we are fortunate to have staff, board, committee members, and other community support that constantly puts that philanthropy into action. We hosted our first annual Rural Philanthropy Day. This was our opportunity to bring grant-making organizations here and from across the bridge together to talk about shared challenges, interests, and, and, and ways that we could work together. This is very important for us as we try to create those thriving communities across our eastern shore. We also visited Smith Island with some of our board members to celebrate all that that history and culture brings to our region and the good that happens at every edge of this amazing place that we serve called the Lower Eastern Shore. We had donor advisors who pooled resources to grant $73,000 to the Salisbury Fire Department. This was for ballistic vests, not to protect policemen, but protect, to protect paramedics and firefighters who were perilously at risk when trying to yield aid and provide life-saving service. So these are the kinds of opportunities where we value the responsiveness of donor advisors who come together for something that is an urgent and immediate need. We also opened our giving shop storefront at the new Purdue Henson Junior Achievement Center along with many other community and business partners. We thank our friends at the Keith Campbell Foundation for uh, making it possible for us to do that um, and to infuse philanthropy into the curriculum that 10,000 students will benefit from each year. Together in this room and others, they're the ones that did this and so much more to help bring $6.1 million in grants and scholarships to Wicomico, Worcester, and Somerset counties. Philanthropy is one of those terms that often sounds like them, but philanthropy is us. And thank you for being part of that. So speaking of us, let's talk about a few really wonderful examples of those who are giving their time and talent and treasure to create that philanthropy in action. We're to the point where we'll present a very few special awards and recognize that exceptional work. Thanks again to Mike Truitt for all he's done, and it is the chairman's award, the chairman picks, you know that, you were chairman, um, and it is um, certainly well-deserved. Could any former recipients of our chairman's award, the Henson Award for Nonprofit Excellence, the Frank H. H. Morris Humanitarian Award, or the Mary Gladys Jones Volunteer Award, please stand or wave.
Thank you for your service and the impact in our region. We have a few more award recipients in the room. They just don't know it yet. So before we transition there, though, I did want to mention, as I had said, that our anniversary is next year, 2024, 40 years. And so we're going to wrap up today with a little, little surprise um, to, to kick off that 40th. So stay tuned for that. But without further ado, I want to bring my friend Velda Henry back to the stage. She's going to present our first award, the Mary Gladys Jones Volunteer of the Year Award. The purpose of the Murray Gladys Jones Volunteer of the Year Award is to honor the commitment and value of a volunteer's comp contributions through the investment of time, talent, and expertise. In presenting this award, we acknowledge the immeasurable value that volunteers and the spirit of service bring to our communities. This year's honoree will receive $1,000 for a nonprofit organization of their choice. We are proud to honor a person who has spent their entire life impacting the lives of others and contributing to the community at large. In the spirit of volunteerism, it was stated in this person's nomination that they personified the term charitable and their passion for our community is contagious. That passion certainly shows as this individual has made great impact volunteering with numerous organizations throughout Worcester and Wacomico counties. They have served as president of the Salisbury University Maroon and Gold Club, vice chair of the Ocean City Drug and Alcohol Abuse Prevention Committee, board member of Worcester County Recreation and Parks and the National Alliance of Youth Sports, and they also volunteer with Atlantic General Foundation and many additional organizations in our community. With a special passion for youth and sports, our honoree has served as a mentor, inspiring thousands of children in Worcester County. They initiated multiple sports programs in the Play It Safe Committee in Ocean City and established a national certified youth sports program through the National Alliance of Youth Sports. Through an inspiring 39-year career with Ocean City Recreation and Parks, this person has been the recipient of countless awards, including Best Youth Organization Director, Ocean City Citizen of the Year, and so many more. We are honored to add to that well-deserved list of awards today. This person does not only defy our expectations, but his altruistic actions and positive attitude empowers and motivates others to do the same. With pleasure, I present the Mary Gladys Jones Volunteer of the Year Award to Mr. Alvin Hondo Handy. My wife said um, she wanted me to come over with her today and that I had to wear a tie. <laughs> I said, I'm not gonna wear a tie. Nobody's wearing a tie to this. And she said it was for her, which it may be, I'm not sure, her friend's um, award that's probably here, Miss Bev. And I said, okay, I'll wear a tie for you and Miss Bev. <clears throat> um, I am certainly, <laughs> I lost for a few words because I did not expect this this morning when I woke up. Um, I just want to say thanks to the Community Foundation and my good friend Bowdell and Patrick and everyone that's here. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, uh, 
I have had a very successful uh, career. Uh, I came from a time when my mother grew up in the times of Jim Crow laws. No going in the front doors of restaurants, no using public restrooms and drinking out of water fountains, public water fountains, but she always uh, pushed me to be the best that I could be. And uh, that's the name of my book, Plug Plug. <laughs> Define expectations. I wanted to prove everyone that I knew that was wrong, that, that they were wrong, that you didn't have to have something and grew up in a great place uh, because I grew up with no um, indoor plumbing, uh, only a pump in the front yard when we pump the water, we had to, my mother would have to boil the water before we could use it, otherwise it would stay in our clothes. Uh, she only had a, I know the young kids in here don't know, they had a, a washboard to, to wash our clothes. And then later on, she got a hand-me-down washing machine. But I say this all because it's not where you come from or what you had when you grew up. It's what you have in your heart. And I tried to face all the challenges that I had, uh, and I took it on early. Uh, leaving Fire Street Elementary School, an all-black elementary school in Berlin, it doesn't exist anymore. But we received information in the sixth grade that said, uh, in the next few years, all the schools in Worcester County are going to be integrated. So here's your opportunity to go to Stephen Decatur early. Myself and a few of my friends, including Oliver Purnell and Ron Dixon, decided to go to Decatur and become the first six African Americans to attend Decatur directly out of Fly Street Elementary. And we, we were told that we probably wouldn't do well in the schools. But again, that was a challenge, and we faced it on. We weren't able to play sports, which we loved, and not really good at it. <laughs> so the first few years, and back then, uh, the class, the grades were for seventh grade to twelfth grade. Can you imagine a seventh grade now walking down the halls with a twelfth grader? But we weren't able to play sports in the first couple of years, and by the time we reached the ninth grade, we were able to play different sports, and we loved basketball, and I played all of them, soccer, baseball. But by the time we reached the 12th grade, we, uh, uh, you know, we won the state championship. And I was probably the shortest kid ever to play for Stephen Decatur. <laughs> <laughs> and then went on to be the shortest kid ever to play for Salisbury State College, <laughs> now Salisbury University. But uh, after graduation, I had a great career. You should mention it at, at uh, Town of Ocean City's Recreation Department. And it's just been so wonderful. And I am still standing here stunned about this award. So I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Okay, next up we have Stephanie's going to return, Stephanie Willie's going to return to the stage and introduce our Richard Henson Award for Nonprofit Excellence. Thank you, Erica, and I just want to take a moment to say what a privilege it's been to serve on this board for 12 years, and I'm really honored to present this award today. The Award for Nonprofit Excellence was established in 1989 to honor Richard A. Henson for his transformational leadership in our community. Recipients must make an outstanding contribution to the well-being of residents of the Lower Shore by responding to a significant community need, showing ingenuity and innovation in utilizing resources and demonstrating excellence in board leadership and responsibility. In addition to their award, our honoree receives $5,000 to support their mission. 
This year's recipient provides direct and personal support services to vital members of our community. They have demonstrated numerous times in recent years their ability to be responsive to the ever-changing needs of the community they serve. This organization is committed to empowering adults with disabilities to create rich, meaningful lives as inclusive members of society. As a workforce development center specializing in day habilitation programs, this organization was in danger when in-person activities halted in 2020. The leadership and staff were quick to adjust, expanding their services to offer art classes via Zoom and delivering supplies to individuals' homes so they would have an interactive and creative outlet during those uncertain times. Continuing this effort, their arts programs allow adults with disabilities to express themselves in unique and creative ways and gives them a sense of accomplishment and confidence as they complete and share their own works of art. Continuing to expand their horizons, the team keeps working to establish more community partnerships, personalized and group activities, and volunteer experiences for their clients. Since its inception in 1971, this organization has served as a lifeline for adults with developmental disabilities and their families, a bridge to friendship, work, and independence. They have a creative and committed approach to providing educational, social, vocational, and residential programs designed to encourage self-reliance, achievement, and economic independence for adults with developmental disabilities. It is my honor to present the 2023 Richard A. Henson Award to Worcester County Developmental Center. Wow, <laughs> thank you. Um, my staff and I are the luckiest people in the world. We get to work with the best people in the world, and that's people who live with an intellectual disability. I've been in the field for 30 years, and I know I and my staff, the years that they've been involved too, will tell you that every day our clients teach us more than we have taught them, me personally, in 30 years. They are the best people in the world, the most genuine, the most real. It is just a joy. It really is a joy to go to work every day and to be able to work alongside them. And we do work alongside and learn and grow with each other. It wasn't too many years ago when we were asking for the, from the Community Foundation for three and $4,000 for a computer. In the past 10 years, we have grown tremendously and it's only because of the dedication of our staff, the willingness of our clients to try new and try different things that we've been able to expand our services the way we have. We have grown from just a small area in Worcester County that we have people from all over the state who are inquiring about our services, who are coming from different parts of the state and are now members of our team. We're living in Worcester County in our residential homes and coming to our program. Um, over the moon. I'm over the moon with this. I share this mainly with the clients. I love them, the best people in the world. If you're ever having a bad day, come down to UR, or do a WCDC, Worcester County Developmental Center, spend about 10 minutes with the clients, your view will be changed forever. Thank you all very much for your ongoing support. Okay, um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Annette Wallace, who is going to announce this year's Frank H. Morris Humanitarian Award. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Thank you, Erica, for the opportunity. Um, and since Stephanie went ahead and did it, um, I, I also want to plug, put a plug in um, how honored I am to uh, have served as a board member of the Community Foundation. I've served on a lot of boards. Um, and this board is a very special one. So it's a testament to the individuals in this room who over the years have been board members, um, but also to Erica and her staff. So thank you. This award was established in 1991 to honor Frank's lifelong dedication to the community and the high ethics, values, and professional standards he exhibited in his life. Frank's philanthropic spirit, integrity, and compassion for others are values that still enrich our community today. The recipient of this award receives $2,500 for the charity of their choice and joins a distinguished list of leaders who have shared their time and talent to make this community stronger. This year's honoree knows community. As a native of the shore, his presence has graced multiple counties through various professional and volunteer opportunities. Commonly heard from this individual, whenever needs arise, I'll cover it. Yet he never, never, never seeks any recognition. He quietly contributes, and then he asks others to help. If there's a ramp to be built, he's there. If someone is in the hospital, he visits. When a massive renovation is undertaken, he's ready for the challenge, staying involved the entire time and continuing as the keeper of the facility. If he thinks you aren't feeling well, he's gonna call and ask, if you're A-OK. -okay. He's gonna help you rebuild your boat or fix your car. You often wonder, where does he find the time and how does he pay for all the gas as he travels to and from being a service to others? When he connects with a young person struggling to find their way and making money by doing yard work, he makes referrals to help that young man build a future that sets him on a new path. His mentee said in his nomination of this year's Morris Award recipient, I am writing this as a victor as my path certainly could have not gone another way. Thanks to all the potential he saw in me, as well as his unwavering belief that I could accomplish something in life and be more than my past, I now believe it too. His wise counsel, advice, and the strength he gave me have made all the difference. What greater gift can you give someone? The list of organizations this person has been involved with is long, and the positions held are very impressive. Organizations like Horizon, MAC, Rotary Club of Salisbury, Lower Shore Enterprise, Hudson Health Services, Dove Point, the Delmarva Education Foundation, Trinity United Methodist Church, United Way, and so many more other organizations have benefited from his unwavering commitment. I had a short thing to share and I, I ran out of time. I meant to give Erica a photo of myself and this individual from the early 90s um, that you could have shared on this screen um, as this individual was my superintendent. Uh, and I actually have a photo that I couldn't come across um, of an award I won. So instead of that photo, you'll just get to see another photo of us together today um, as it is my privilege, privilege and honor to present the Frank H. Morris Humanitarian Award to Dr. Terry Greenwood. I'm shocked. I am really shocked. Um, interesting, I had the same conversation with my wife about the tie. <laughs> and I said, no one's going to notice whether I have a tie on or not. Um, I, I am just at a loss for words. I'm, I'm telling you, this is um, it's amazing. I, I, uh, I don't think what I do is all that great. Um, I, I enjoy helping people, working with people, as most of you do in here. And 
I don't know who wrote that about me, but, um, <laughs> but I really am in awe of the other folks in this room who have received this award and the folks today who have received all the awards. I want to congratulate each one of you and tell you that I am so grateful for the Community Foundation and for this community and our local counties working together. And I have worked in all three counties at one time or another with different folks, with, with different organizations. And uh, this is just a great place to live with great folks like you out there. And just thank you, thank you very much. Well, I think that sounds like a true humanitarian to not think that what they do is all that great, right? Yeah. Um, congratulations to everyone. It really is a joy to celebrate you, and we especially love it when you're shocked and awed because it's more fun for us that way. Um, please, if you would, award recipients, um, stay after, and we'll take a few photos. We'll be as quick as possible um, at the end of the program. But before we bring our meeting to a close, Giving Tuesday is November 28th, and we are grateful to be hosting our ninth annual Shore Gives More campaign. With 128 local nonprofits participating, there is literally no limit to how you can have a positive impact on this community. I want to thank our lead sponsors for Giving Tuesday, Shore United Bank, Gail and the team there, and 47 ABC, Stephanie and the team there. Your support is greatly appreciated and really allows us to make this event possible. We encourage all of you to get involved. It's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and our team and all the participating nonprofits prepare for months for this campaign. And as part of our efforts on the Community Foundation side, we ensure that all of these organizations are local, that they're 501c3 nonprofits, that they're in good standing, and that they're in good, invest they're good investments of your dollars. The beauty of SureGivesMore.org is that it is really kind of too easy to give. You learn so many wonderful things that are happening on the shore, and then when you visit to support one nonprofit, it's easy to give to another and another. It's kind of like that anybody late night Amazon shop, <laughs> cart, cart, cart. Um, so it's sort of like that. Now we encourage you every year to participate and many of you step up, but it's possible that some of you haven't had a chance yet or that you've given but would like to do a little more. And at the Community Foundation, we truly believe that everyone can be a philanthropist. And we take great pride in our goal of connecting people who care with causes that matter. We partner to strengthen our collective outreach in this campaign, and we support you, the donors, in your giving to know that everything that you're giving is creating local good. So to celebrate our upcoming 40th anniversary at the Community Foundation, we're going to kick off this year's Sure Gives More campaign by awarding $40,000 right now. Today, with the help of some of you, we will kickstart Sure Gives More 2023. There are many philanthropists in this room, but we wanna help 40 of you create some immediate impact. Please open the annual report at your table. Then look at the little envelope. That's where you send money back to us if you want to. So yeah, look at the envelope. Uh, look at the envelope on the inside where you like stick it together. And if you have a star on your envelope, would you please stand? There should be 40. Keep looking. So there are 40 throughout the room. There are 60 tables, so I apologize that not able, every table will have one. It's 40 years. Well, 20 years, we'll do 60. For the folks standing, 
Each of you is going to receive a $1,000 charitable gift certificate to support your favorite Sure Gives More organization. The way you do that is you fill out the envelope and then on the way out, our lovely team that did registration will give you the instructions of how to make your gift. Everyone else, you can leave your name tags. <laughs> Again, congratulations to all of our award winners. Um, please stay for photos. Please turn in your name tags. Please look for the star in case there's one floating around that hasn't been designated. And please keep in your heart our dear friend, uh, Veronique Derricker, who is in France with family. Um, they um, um, celebrated the life of her mom uh, earlier today, and she'll be back with us next week. And we have um, her beloved Memo here in her place. So thanks, Memo. So thank you all for being here today and for your continued support of this community foundation. We will look forward to seeing you back here on November 1st, 2024 for that annual meeting. And who knows what we'll have in store then. Have a great day, everyone.